your introduction in the chat, your name, your contact information, your introduction, if you want, so we can we can connect each other in the chat as well. And we appreciate y'all's uh, patience on our little summer hiatus last month. We sort of had a, a summer break and, and it's, you know, as we're going to talk about some here today, just like, you know, there really isn't any, any break in this, in this <laughs> industry and it's just moving at such a yeah. rapid pace. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's really exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Oh, Doug is here. I don't see him. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Yuka. Thanks, Jacob. <laughs> yeah, and here's Thank Colin. And, and Colin. Is Colin in? Yeah, he just came in. Yeah. Colin, you're the man. Where are hey, you? Hey, everyone. Hello. Hi, how are welcome you? back, Colin. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. This is late at night. Yeah. Or <laughs> early in the morning. I don't know how what time it, it is now. It's oh, midnight. Thank you very, 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 very uh, much. It's and okay. So, Jacob, why why don't you start? Take it. Yeah, away. let's let's kick us off. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll do the the standard. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. And and for Colin, good night. Uh, but not in the sleep type of way. Um, welcome back, everyone, to our uh, Global Chamber AI series. You know, we we really. Um, both dive into really interesting topics, touch a lot of different topics across sectors, um, but also try to have some fun and and get excited and and really raise interest in this uh, in this ever ever ev you know, evolving industry. And so today we're sort of uh, gonna have have a two part session, um, including bringing back our our first guest ever back in January, Colin, uh, to give us sort of an update on his work. Uh, but also talk about uh, the AI Council. Um, and then uh, I'm going to pass the mic over to Yuka, since she already said how psyched she was uh, about our second guest, uh, Marco, where we're going to you know, just dive into more things about prompt engineering and how to really um, use this technology to, to ease the load off your shoulders and, and make work um, a lot easier, um, allow you to get into more of the complex stuff. And so... Uh, it's always a pleasure to have everyone here. We're always very, very honored to have you here. And um, why don't we just uh, kick this off? And so, Colin, I'm going to pass the mic over to you. And um, why don't you give us an update on you know what you've been up to, how's work going, and and tell us a little bit about the AI Council. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's great to be back. And I have to do a shout out for Pat. Uh, one of the things I've been up to is Pat and I have been scheming the last few months on, and we've created a startup called finscope.ai, which is building some really interesting tools for financial um, managers and uh, uh, accounting firms and that sort of thing. Um, and those are rolling out. Um, but uh, I, I just have three quick slides. I'll make this really fast. Um, so, you know, you ask what have I been up to? Well, so here's some of the some of the things that <laughs> AI has been sort of topic number one for the last few years, as I know it's true of probably most of the people in this in this call. Um, I was really honored that I was invited to go to Peru in February um to attend the A APEC senior officials meeting and serve on the AI panel on digital trade. Um, along with some other folks from Europe and Asia. Um, and then also um, to speak about what's happening in Asia with AI uh, at the TPX, the Tech Policy Exchange Conference in London. Um, and then on the bottom, uh, there's been some amazing things happening here in the Philippines. I'm glad to say and proud to say that the Philippines government has been very progressive and very excited about embracing AI. So we already uh, released last year a national AI roadmap. And then this year, the organization that I co-founded six years or seven years ago, which is the Analytics and AI Association of the Philippines, it's a nonprofit NGO, 
um, we signed an MOU to be the implementer of the National AI Roadmap for the entire country. Um, so that's a couple of the undersecretaries there and myself and our executive director signing the agreement and with you know a real strong focus on responsible AI as well. And then um, on the business side, I've been really focused on two verticals, healthcare, which I've been, as Doug knows, I've been involved in for a quarter of a century. And um, more recently, because of Pat's influence <laughs> on financial services, uh, so Finscope, I um, already mentioned, and then the other startup that we have, it's also a Global Chamber member now out of, out of Los Angeles, is a company called Navix Health, and we've launched Navix.ai, which is a set of tools that are used by um, healthcare professionals in the addiction treatment and mental health space to... Uh, um, wrestle uh, back their time in preparing all of the mountains of paperwork that they have to prepare for insurance claims. So probably those of you who you know know something about that industry is you know, um, yeah. a counselor who do who does like a 30 or 60 minute treatment session might spend another 30, 60 minutes just writing up all of the documentation that's needed to get approval on a medical claim. And so we're we, we've reduced that to about five minutes um, using some generative AI tools. So I've got some very happy customers uh, on board with that already. So I was talking to Doug and uh, some others, and uh, let me just go to the next um, page here. So, uh, um, and about this idea of um, getting uh, willing volunteers <laughs> to collaborate and and maybe start to formalize an AI council for, for a global chamber. You know, I put there just as, you know, as, as a, a conversation starter, you know, certainly a starter, um, the idea of shaping the future of global business growth, right, uh, through AI and collaboration. So that sort of brings the intersection of what global chamber is all about, which is global business growth through collaboration, and then just sort of inject the AI component. And then again, as a conversation starter, I thought of, sort of three things like, you know, what might a charter look like? What would be the areas of focus and what would be the value and benefits? And so just like a, like I say, a starter starting point for a charter, which is something like um, driving AI education, which you guys, you know, Jacob and Yuka and others have been doing a fantastic job with this series and many other activities and many other events that you've been doing um, and initiatives that you've been doing. It's really spreading the word about how to become educated about AI, but then to take it to the uh, and another step of uh, how do we adopt, how do we sort of uh, catalyze and adopt partnerships around AI? Because a lot of us, I mentioned, you know, well, you know, Pat and I, I think are a good case study there. We've joined forces halfway around the world between South Africa and Philippines, you know, to create some AI tools. But there's probably so many people building bits and pieces, and if we can um facilitate partnerships and then more broadly you know at a 50,000 foot level i guess um drive sort of thought leadership within our network within the global chamber family you know um and uh so i i put maybe five focus areas one would be um how to think about ai in uh gr growing your business globally number 2 very important, obviously, is responsible and ethical AI. It's a huge concern and a huge topic. And I know you've been addressing these topics already. I haven't been able to attend because it's at midnight, these events, but I've been able to watch the replays. <laughs> and uh, and then, um, of course, a focus on education and skills, a focus on partnerships, as I mentioned already in the charter, and a focus on building value, right? All, all of the above being tested and measured by some sort of KPIs um, ar around, is this, this really drive value? Because if it doesn't drive value, then we're just wasting our time. Um, and then, so speaking of value, I think I could see immediately some things popping out. One, you know, just through our collaboration, one would be tools for executive directors. And I've already actually been playing with um, some tools that I think, you know, I'm excited that we might be able to roll out that take, the combined knowledge base that Doug and the team have built up over the many years um, 
uh, for Global Chamber, for example, there's been, I don't know how many hundreds of recorded events over the last several years and all the YouTube videos exist that can be all ingested and become a, just amazing data set um, of knowledge. And then of course there for EDs and people managing chapters, um, there are things like the, you know, the SOPs and things like this, right? So this can all be ingested as a knowledge base. So I think tools to help um, executive directors to grow to grow their chapters and to make more value for members. Um, and then likewise tools for members um, and then along with that, educational resources and then um, coordinating, you know, networking, collaboration, right? So, uh, so that's about it. Um, I'll I'll stop the share here. Um, so just like again, just kind of a a starting point for for where we can take something like this. Yeah, and thank you, Colin, and 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 thank you again for joining us uh, so late at night and and. This, I know I'm really excited about this, and I know everyone else that's just learning about this and hearing about this is also getting some getting excited. And then just as I was hearing you talk, you know, thinking about uh, one thing, you know, maybe a, a year down the road, what would be cool is to have you come and present uh, progress on on the roadmap uh, uh, program. That's that's incredible. Congratulations on 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 having that in Philippines and. Then also thinking about, you know, just the representation across all sectors here. You know, we have, we can, at this council, we can come from uh, uh, a place of, of being informed um, and then we can activate uh, that knowledge within this network. You know, it's, it's the power of this network is, is something that I speak about so much and um, being able to have these focused areas where we can thus activate this knowledge, this shared knowledge and 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 activity um, is is unparalleled. Um, I'd love to, you know, before we dive into our next part, I'd love to open it up just for a few questions. Or Yuka, do you have any thoughts? No, thank you very much, Colin. Uh, it's it's wonderful, and you said uh, the value for the members what you're doing, but I think it's uh, value for the EDs as well. So. Uh, I'm Absolutely. very, very psyched about this tool. And uh, thank you for doing this. I, I know you're pretty busy doing healthcare, fintech, uh, AI, all that kind of stuff. But And thank you very much for participating in this particular session to share this at midnight. I truly appreciate well, thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuka. <laughs> Thanks to what you guys have been doing too. It's been amazing. And um, I'm just uh, honored to to, to be uh, participating. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And and you know I was adding on and thinking of other areas like focus areas that could be very beneficial at, at this early stage um, is, is looking at at AI infrastructure and AI infrastructure in areas where uh, there needs to be additional infrastructure and and seeing what our representation is there. So that's something that. Uh, is is a big part of of what I hope to do with AI is is ensure that you don't um, create another generation of of technology haves and have nots. Um, and infrastructure is a major piece of that. Well, uh, is there is there does anybody have any quick questions about the AI Council or have any thoughts or ideas or or statements they want to make? Maybe Dad can do something. Are you there, Doug? I I am. So, Colin, thank you uh, for all <laughs> that you do and our long uh, friendship. It means a lot. I, I called Colin uh, a month or two ago for a, a short check-in call, and it turned into a multi-hour <laughs> conversation uh, because it was just really inspirational. There There's at least a couple things that are going on right now of significance within Global Chamber that will set the stage for an amazing 2025 and certainly one of them is um, the, this council so um, Colin thank you for your leadership there and I look forward to to working with you on it I earlier this week was thinking that you know we need to set a time and I'll, I'll reach out separately to kind of take the next steps but uh, as all of you have 
comments and thoughts and ideas and want to participate, uh, please send an email to Colin or to me or to reach out in the GC community that we have now for AI to be able to to uh, to to share your thoughts, and certainly we we want to use the collective knowledge and skills of of this community to advance the community. Um, the the GC community that we have now around AI uh, is a starting point, and we want to continue to build on that and hopefully support uh, all of our all of our members. And Colin, I you know Colin, when I think about uh, when you went to the Philippines originally, you, you you told me something like, well, you know, I'm pretty much just going to retire and take it easy. And then <laughs> lo and behold, you know, he gets married. He has two kids. He just becomes the executive director of Global Chamber. He starts this nonprofit association. <laughs> he's, a, he's a regular speaker on a global scale. He's continuing to have a you know an impact on on the world and so i admire you so much for for that impact and and the ongoing impact you're having within global chamber within the philippines and within your own family congratulations thank, thank you, you very much. all right yuka um if you want to take over and and uh, introduce our next guest and and get this next uh, part of the session kicked off i'll yeah, pass it over okay. to you so um <laughs> First of all, as I said at the beginning of this session, the credit doesn't go to me. It goes to Cesar, who who introduced and fixed this uh, session. And thank you very, very much. He's quiet today, but <laughs> well, usually. My uh, pleasure, but, Yuka. Thank you. Yeah. For thank you very very much thank you marco I, marco is a is a you know he, he gets things done no, no doubt i know <laughs> and i i talked to him before the session and i'm pretty psyched because he connected two worlds that i know as well and it was pretty amazing to see him what he does is to use ai to let's say for executives to be more productive and not only being productive but make progress in their career meaning he uses this to not just the productivity but break through our limiting briefs as well that's pretty amazing and here is marco and are you there would you mind coming onto yeah. the stage? Okay. And yeah, he's, yeah, he's a new member in 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 Milano, and he was introduced by one of the members who is a sleep coaching. Sleep no, sleep. it's actually <laughs> no, actually the member is Doug Selcher, huh? and oh. I knew about Global Chamber through him because he's one of my clients. Okay, so. Now he comes with this, uh, let's say, powerful tool. And actually, tool is tool. Without him, maybe we can't understand. We can't use the tool very well. So if you're interested in, please get in touch with him to, to be coached or to be served. Um, I guess the tool is unbelievable, but I actually he's unbelievable amazing so stage is yours please introduce yourself and and your yeah your work. yeah yeah awesome awesome so thank you yuka so as yuka was saying uh, um pretty much guys uh, i'm a chief performance architect so i started my background in uh, sleep optimization uh, high performance habits nutrition uh, integration uh, and eventually I added uh, AI to my arsenal of tools uh, and pretty much everything changed. So now what I actually do is integrating uh, AI for uh, science back systems when it comes to decision-making, uh, enhancing decision-making, uh, increasing productivity, even shifting limiting beliefs. Uh, and by the way, I need to give the credits here uh, to my, you know, my dear partner, Jedediah Thomas, who's actually joining us today because he's the inventor of uh, 
uh, limiting beliefs. Uh, uh, I'm too lazy to do it myself, so I'm using AI as well to do it. Uh, but, you know, uh, pretty much we combine everything in a total performance architecture uh, to, you know, shift the lim limiting beliefs uh, to rewire your mind for success as an executive, uh, to 10x your productivity pretty much, and that's not under an understatement, integrated tech productivity tools, optimizes your sleep, uh, your physiology to get into a state of uh, peak performance and flow. So it's pretty much like, you know, a combined solution of elements. Now, uh, when it comes to today, what I want to do is uh, delivering value by focusing on prompting uh, engineering. Now, everyone knows about AI, but very few people, uh, you know, know really how to use it. Now, Yuka is actually an example because she's a prompt engineer. However, uh, most people use it uh, as a almost like as a conversational tool, as a chatbot, you know? So, you know, they write one sentence, AI gives something back. They write another sentence, AI gives something back. The problem is uh, they lack most components when it comes to get a real answer. Get a real answer that is longer, you know, two, three pages, five pages, 10 pages, 15 pages. Uh, and the reason is uh, prompting and generating them. So today, since, uh, you know, we're in a very, volatile environment, uh, what I thought of is uh, using a combination of uh, frameworks, uh, two frameworks in particular, uh, for uh, executive decision making. So imagine uh, you have to make a decision uh, as a director, uh, as an executive, as a founder, uh, but you don't have much information. You know, you don't have much, much information at end, uh, and it's urgent. You know, let's say in 48 hours, you need to make a decision. All right, so what do you do? You know, so today we're going to dive into that. We're literally like going to, you know, just to give you an idea, maybe I can share my screen. You know, we're literally going to move from these to these. I bet these are even like a starting point. All right. We can actually get into, you know, if a longer prompt, you know, I got to the point of getting prompts that were 100 lines, 150, you know, that were too long sometimes for AI as well. So it really comes to the quality of your prompts, all right? So, um, all clear so far? I know that, you know, I don't want to overload you guys. All clear so far? Just tell me yes in the chat. Uh, so we make this uh, interactive. Uh, all right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay. So let's actually start uh, with an outline uh, of the concepts that you need to actually, you know, know before we do this exercise. So. There are two frameworks that I wanna, you know, I wanna talk to you guys about. The first one uh, is ICCGT framework. I'm gonna write this in the chat uh, so that you can all see. So this is the first framework. All right. So what does it stand for? It stands for identity, constraints, context, goal, and task. All right, so usually people would say, okay, so I need to I need to make a decision in 40, I don't know, 48 hours in a volatile market. All right, so this is a typical prompt um, of, you know, a good percentage of, uh, of people that, are, you know, I'm trying to use AI these days. It lacks most uh, most things for AI to give you a real uh, answer, a real detailed answer. So let me actually define this. So identity. Let's assume for a moment that you could pay $100,000, which is a fair amount of money, to an expert to help you out with your problem. Who would you work with? All right. So of course, if it's like a personal development issue, you would say, well, imagine you are Tony Robbins. All right. Or maybe, you know, if it was, uh, I don't know, uh, if it was maybe, you know, how we can how we can send people on Mars, you would say, imagine you're Elon Musk, you know, so it would actually get your crazy response. But the point is, identity is a way for AI to get, to give you a clear perspective, to give you a perspective that is actually useful. So I'm going to put these uh, in the chat there so you can actually all understand. So identity, example, and importance. All right, so the right identity ensures relevant expertise and perspective. All clear so far, guys? I know that these are not, you know, like 
they are decent concepts, but not super simple. All right, all right, awesome. So the first, the second one is constraints. All right, so constraints are pretty much like the limitations, the parameters. So let's say we need to make a decision in 48 hours. That's a constraint. Or uh, we need to make a decision uh, around a certain uh, um, regulation because we are in an healthcare environment or because we are in a highly regulated environment. All right? So uh, constraints, I'm going to put this in the chat as well. All right? So for you all to see. Uh, yeah, now actually reading the message from Jacob. Uh, yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah, and what Jacob is actually talking about is interesting because it's the next step, which is uh, context, all right? So which is the context that you can provide AI about your task, all right? So context, uh, let's say that you need to make a decision, huh? about your company, of course, you cannot expect AI to give you a clear, you know, detailed response uh, if it doesn't know anything about your company. All right, so at least uh, um, make the favor to AI and even to yourself uh, to upload uh, a document of your uh, ideal client profile, of your uh, services, uh, of the outcomes of your service, of, uh, you know, uh, of your org charts, all right, so the context is pretty much like files, SOPs, uh, content, and everything else. All right, so just to just to put it like in very very simple, uh, uh, very simple terms. All clear so far, guys. I know that these are all. I mean, they may be new concepts. So I don't know. You know, most people are experts here about AI. So all clear. Just you know, tell me yes, so I know that you know everything is resonating. All right, all right, so awesome. So the other two, and then we're gonna move to the next one, and then we're gonna do the exercise. I want to give you guys context, otherwise uh, things may not be clear. Goal, uh, what's the ultimate objective? All right, so what do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? So let's say you want to um, achieve a 50% year-over-year growth for your company in the next 12 months in a new brand market. That's your goal. All right, so I'm gonna put this in the chat again, just so you can actually see this goal. All right, importance, of course, a clear goal will guide the eye towards what you actually want to do. Um, by Amy, and then the task. Okay, so what what do you actually need the AI to do? All right, so um, an example would be if you could only take three actions to solve this problem, which would it be? All right, so this is another way of actually um, going about this. Um, I'll stop there for a second. Uh, you can look clear so far, uh, participants all clear. Yeah, does anybody have any questions, like any, any, any comments or thoughts for Marco for what he's gone through so far? Cool, I think we're good. All good. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Good. So let's actually move to the next part and then we're going to start with the interactive exercise. So, um, and to actually wrap these uh, all up, uh, like this framework, the ICCGT framework, uh, actually pretty much ensures uh, you provide all the essential information uh, for optimal advice. All right. Also, always imagining that, you know, AI is an identity, you know, represents an identity. And the funny thing is that sometimes, uh, actually, whenever you need, uh, AI can represent the multiple identities uh, at once. So it creates a synergi synergistic effect, all right? Now, the other thing is very simple. This is a technique uh, that, you know, you absolutely know, so it's called the zero-shot chain of thought, all right? So I'm going to put this in the chat, and I want to make this simple for you. So if any in if it's actually um it's actually hard or whatever you just tell me and i will explain zero shot chain of thought uh, is actually very 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 useful uh, especially when you have a little information at the end uh, and you need to make a decision so in today's volatile market uh, it might be especially useful for executive decision making and that's why i chose this because it really helps you uh, own in uh, into a 
and defined uh, pathway, a defined action uh, without too much information at end. Maybe you don't know what's gonna come, uh, you know, down the pipe. You don't know what's gonna, you know, what's gonna happen next. You don't know much. You you know about the past and the present, but you don't know much about the future because with AI, especially now, things are so uh, fast changing and predictable. So zero shot chain of thought uh, adds with that. So just to actually give you a a metaphor here, I'm gonna put this in the chat. It's like creating a roadmap for an explored territory. All right, so this is actually what zero shot chain of thought does. No. Um, guys, all clear? Mm, we can start with the exercise. Just give me a, a thumbs up. Okay, good, good. So, um, so first and foremost, uh, uh, I want to, you know, I do want to be flexible here because, you know, uh, it really, it's really up to you. Um, you guys can choose between uh, this prompt. All right, then I'm gonna give you like a, a sample prompt to work on. Or, this is a sample prompt, eh? or, and then eventually we're gonna to re we're going to review this together. You guys can choose like a specific problem that you're facing right now that eventually, you know, you feel comfortable with, uh, I don't know, sharing or whatever. That's of course totally up to you. I want to keep this flexible because of course, you know, I think that might be confidential. So again, uh, tell me guys, do you want to, do you want to do something more personalized, uh, like your own prompt, uh, working on your own prompt, uh, or do you guys want to work uh, on these uh, prompt? Just let me know in the chat. Mm. Right? That's great, Jed. Okay. Um, Yuka, like, how do you want to handle this? If we can maybe focus on uh, one specific prompt, but honestly, I would actually uh, want to the people to do it uh, themselves uh, and give the instructions. Yeah, I, I have a question to the audience. Does everybody have an access to your... AI system right now, uh, if it's your prompting uh, software or or open AI or whatever it is, because this FYI was... chat GPT mm -hmm. is down right now. Really? Well, Claude is not. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's down globally. It's down. Yeah, so but let... Claude is available. So why don't you do it, Marco, using Claude? Um, if ChatGPT is down, maybe many people don't have access to their tools. Is it correct? Um, yeah, actually, even Claude. Uh, I, I'm not using ChatGPT to be honest. I'm using yeah. Claude, and technically, people can can use that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I am I am no resistance of uh, <laughs> of doing this uh, um, of doing this myself. But you know, I, I would actually love the people to you know, to work on this so they can actually get something okay. uh, out of okay. this exercise. So, um, yeah. Maybe they can use Cloud, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Not sure. Does this work for you guys? I don't know, like the what Tara. Is, is it fine for you guys to actually use Cloud? I mean, it's actually what I'm using as well and it gives more accurate results as well. Right. Good. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. Good. Awesome, awesome. So. Um, you can, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop in the chat, uh, um, mm -hmm. pretty much, um, um, po -po -po -po. Uh, let me, let me just see. Okay. I'm going to drop in the chat the, again, the framework uh, for people to, uh, to use. Okay. Yeah. And, and the zero shot chain of thought. This is actually for you to, for you guys to actually have a look. And again, you feel free to honestly use either the sample prompt that I provided, or even pretty much the um, even pretty much your own prompt. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you're actually focusing on one particular challenge in your own company, you would like AI to to support you in overcoming the challenge then feel free to apply 
this framework, um, this couple of frameworks that we can, I don't know, Yuka, we can actually give uh, 10 minutes, five, five, 10 minutes five. to do this. Okay. Five <laughs> minutes, uh, go into time. And if this, if there's anybody who wants to ask, just shout because we are connected, right? Let me find. Yeah, we can actually maybe. Let me see. Can actually put a timer on uh, on my okay, end great. as well. Great. I just give maybe seven minutes. That work. <laughs> so we give more time does to the it, people. Yeah. Does anybody have problem connecting to an AI platform to use? Because it's going to be boring waiting for five minutes. Um, well, mm -hmm. I mean, I can share, uh, maybe I can share my screen now. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, yeah. yeah, we could having, having something, seeing you sort of go through it. Uh, yeah. I think that would, okay. buy, that would be really yeah, helpful. Yeah, totally. 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 Absolutely. All right. Happy to do it. Huh? So, um, let me be just use, uh, you know, the prompt of, uh, of jet. Okay, so how to take a target audience from cold to sold via email. Seems that you know this actually might be useful from for all of you guys. So now what we're gonna do is first and foremost uh, inject this in uh, you know in AI and see what it comes up with. All right, so we just you know do this. Uh, um, please advise on how to take a target audience from cold to sold via email. So this is a one line prompt and we'll see what it does. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you can see, what it does is pretty much it creates a start of a conversation. So the problem here is that you need to go back and forth uh, with AI to say, uh, yeah, I mean, I need this. Uh, oh no, I need that. Uh, oh no, you're wrong, I need this. Uh, and it's like, it just turns into a, you know, a super long conversation. And then at some point you get bored, uh, you don't get what you need. Uh, and you just think the AI doesn't work for you, which is of course not, which is not what we want. Mm -hmm. Instead, what we do is, and I'm gonna put this in the in the notes right here first. Uh, so instead of this, uh, we do identity. So identity, I'm gonna ask you this: uh, if you had 100k to drop on an expert, uh, who would you actually work with uh, to actually take a target audience from call to source via email? to actually advise you on that. Just drop it in the chat, if you have any ideas. Okay. Someone else, maybe? Someone else has any idea? I mean, I have my own. We can, must be someone that is, uh, you know, pretty world renowned so AI yeah, can actually draw some some insights. So let's say imagine your Russell Brands. All right, we all know who is Russell Brands. So then context goal task. And then we have zero shot. Chain of thought. All right, so the identity, we define that. We need to define the context, the goal, and the task. So the goal uh, is, yes, I mean, we can say to take a target audience from code to solve via email, uh, but we want to kind of like clarify it. We want to actually give more information to AI. So the, the goal might be uh, take, uh, target audience, my target audience of 10K LinkedIn followers from cold to, from cold prospects to clients, all right, using a email LinkedIn, call calling, and content. So 
we're gonna like give uh, more uh, instructions to AI so you can kind of like have uh, a, a better idea. All right. Of course, you know, in the case of Jet, maybe um, you want to use just email um, in the context of this charter. I think it's actually useful to include the LinkedIn as well. Maybe call calling. Some people may be may be averse to that, but it's still useful uh, from time to time when done right. So there is a goal uh, from call to prospects to clients using email, LinkedIn, call calling, and contact. All right. Then we define the constraints. So the constraint might be keep in mind the regulations of the healthcare industry and a time frame of 90 days, right? So 90 days is a decent, frame, decent time frame. The context may be the context about you. So um, I have just a few case studies, um, no prior experience in this industry. However, more than a decade uh, in uh, I don't know manufacturing. All right, so these at least give some context about you. And the task uh, in this case, uh, so how to take a target audience from call to sold, uh, it would be create a funnel that will uh, allow me to get a target audience. The target audience above from cool prospects to uh, raving clients. All right. So, guys, I know it might be a lot to digest. Uh, it's all clear so far the way that I'm kind of like uh, going about this. Yes. Just, you know, just say yes in the chat so we all know. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And again, like I want to actually, you know, bring up again, zero shot chain of thought. Uh, so break out the decision making process into logical steps. All right. So again, zero shot chain of thought means that it doesn't have much, uh, uh, much information available. All right. So in this case, uh, as you can see, analyze available data on the startup technology, market position, uh, evaluate potential synergies. Like in this case, it just like breaks it, breaks it down step by step. All right. So in zero shot chain of thought, uh, what we're going to add here is uh, define these into logical steps uh, that will allow me to gain market share into a new market without prior knowledge or much context overall. All right. So, um, okay, so far you can just tell me yes, so we can actually get to awesome, awesome. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You can, I mean, these actually, you know, divide the step by step. Huh? Um, let's see if we actually drop these in the chat, in the enclosure, that we say put this information into a revised into a revised prompt. Let's see what, what it does. Okay, so and this is gonna is gonna work even of course with uh, ChatGPT. It doesn't really matter. Not using ChatGPT because it's not you know it's not that safe, especially when you're sharing confidential information. Um, so, and then we say identity. We copy this, and then I'm gonna add like a snippet that I use, and we're gonna close these, huh? and we're gonna see what happens.
I love how it comes with check boxes too. Like that's, uh, it's just yeah. those those simple little add ons that these tech this technology brings um, that allows you to just bring this straight from boom to action. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm gonna share the you know the link in the chat. And again, like uh, um, eventually you can get creative with these, uh, as you were saying, Jacob. Uh, I just uh, did these. Uh, so the cool thing about uh, about you know Cloud is that they just introduced these. Uh, I think like a couple of months now, uh, this feature which is called Artifact, uh, where pretty much you're in the in, you're in the side. You can have uh, you know code. You can have uh, documents, and it's just so good because then eventually I can just say, okay, so copy. I go in Notion. I create a new page. And then I have everything formatted already. All right. So uh, you can kind of like see the difference here. So uh, okay, so this is not it. Okay, this one is. Um, you can kind of see the difference. So the first, you know, the first prompt was actually getting us to actually write more stuff. All right, that's the problem. All right. Uh, so it was actually more uh, time consuming. Uh, instead, as Jacob was saying, uh, we need to like we need to take a strategic approach to the uh, to using AI. Just like you, you know, we are strategic as executives. We must be strategic to win. Uh, we need to be strategic about uh, using AI, not like as a as a chatbot, like as a, as a converse, conversational chatbot, uh, but as a um, you know, as a partner uh, in uh, decision making and productivity, um, truly like as a um, as a supporting uh, uh, figure, all right, not as a as a chatbot. But otherwise, it would lose out on all these uh, uh, good stuff about AI. As you can see, it took us uh, I don't know maybe five minutes to write these, and. I didn't really get this far. I didn't really get to too deep. Uh, it was a pretty pretty simple uh, revised prompt. Uh, still, uh, here, as you can see, you get, okay, so here's a consensus of the key steps. Uh, what do you want to do? Here, in this case, it's like, hey, listen, these are 90 days after market entry funnel strategies. From day one to day, to day seven, you need to do, you need to do these. Uh, from you know, day eight to 13, you need to do these. Uh, uh, content creation authority building uh, and, and all this stuff. And then from here, I can iterate. I can say, A, divide the task by hour and day of the week for most optimal performance. And then here at this point, even if I actually write something like that, uh, it would just create something uh, through the 90 day period, which is Absolutely insane. And here you can actually get already a schedule for you to work with. Of course, you need to revise it. Of course, you need to iterate. Uh, but it's already a schedule for you to work with uh, from uh, Monday to uh, to Friday. This is a week schedule overview. And then you get even in, into the details. Week 1, 2, week 3, 4, week 5, 12, and so on and so forth. All right? So. Not sure, like you, uh, I will stop here because I mean, I love this stuff. So sometimes I may talk too much. Uh, um, is this helpful? Uh, is helpful, guys? I know that I did this myself. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much. And it was very interesting to see how you use this um, tool to make decisions. So this is one of the tools you have, right? And I'm very, very curious what is your business what is your service using these tools can you share so yeah yeah absolutely i'm happy to, to give a few details so pretty much uh, um i integrate ai for uh, executive decision making uh, and you know productivity into a service offering uh, uh, that i call the next gen c suite program uh, which is part of uh, total performance architecture uh, so 12 week program uh, where uh, we pretty much have an arsenal of tool of tools uh, that we can use uh, to like get you to the next level, not just as a you know as a AI powered executive, but as a human being, because we're gonna work on uh, your physiology to get into a state of flow, 
uh, through sleep optimization, nutrition, integration, uh, and not just that. We're also absolutely going to optimize uh, even the mindset, all right? So again, like I, I give credits to, to my partner, uh, um, to my partner, uh, Nabs, Jed, Yara, because he's the one that he came up with his methodology. And I, and I was, you know, happy and lucky to kind of like uh, use this uh, and adapt it uh, to use it with AI. So we're going to like, you know, shift uh, your core limiting beliefs that are holding you back from achieving your true potential uh, or in other words, rewire your mind for success. That's another component. And the last component is of course, tech. So tech in uh, simple words would be using AI just like we are uh, seeing right now for, uh, um, faster and more effective decision making, um, and of course productivity. So repeating, uh, you know, automating tasks, uh, being really light and like, more productive. Like the, the amount of SOPs and you know content that I've been able to create uh, for in the last two months has been has been like not even exponential. It's been factorial. Um, because it just like compounds uh, uh, day you know day by day. So, um, and of course, eventually another thing uh, is that I'm, you know, I'm a certified as well Wavebox partner, which is a tool that you guys can see here, uh, which is an only one workspace. Uh, and this is going to get you into a state of digital flow because it's going to remove all the distractions and it's going to put all the apps together in one place. Uh, um, and there is another thing, but it's all combined into, you know, this 12 wave program. So I hope that was clear enough. So is it a program like a coaching session? So, or is it a program that we can buy and do it by by ourselves? Um, it's actually it's actually coaching. Yeah, it's one to one coaching. Uh, okay. is a weekly is weekly coaching. Uh, yes, and of course, uh, you know, depending on uh, what the client needs, uh, I provide him with uh, you know uh, SOPs, uh, content, uh, um, you know, step by step procedures. But yeah, it's, you know, it's coaching uh, and it's coaching designed to kind of like, uh, really like rewire both their, uh, you know, physiology, their mm -hmm. mindset uh, and their digital, uh, you know, uh, the digital workspace, the digital, uh, you know, world uh, in a way for, um, you know, for the success that they actually want to see. Interesting. Thank you. And there's a question from Sarah. Can you come and ask, Sarah? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm using uh, um, text plays. Uh, yes, yes. Actually, I have some, I don't know, I have some crazy, I'm actually in, uh, on a part-time essay role in the meantime, uh, and I can't stand, uh, you know, doing uh, certain uh, CRM activities and whatnot. So I have, uh, you know, things like, uh, I guess things like these, uh, multi, uh, let me see if I actually um, have these. Uh, uh, so these are pretty, pretty crazy prompt. And again, these are prompt uh, that gives me the call summary, the notes for uh, the CSM, uh, so the success manager and the end of day report uh, all in one go. And yeah, this is pretty crazy. So um, yeah, I'm using text plays uh, absolutely for, for that. Uh, it's very, very useful. Huh? Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm actually uh, using it for, uh, for, for many, many, many things. Yeah. But you know, text space is very, very powerful. Yeah. It's very, very useful. And it looks like we have somebody else that wants to ask a question about, you know, it's just a general question about AI security. Oh yeah. Um, this is me. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Yelim. I'm the project manager at Global Chamber. Um, thanks for an amazing session about the AI. Um, I'm attending this as a project manager at Global Chamber, but at the same time, um, uh, I'm a person who is also interested in AI in business sectors. So I have a question about the general question, a uh, general um, AI security. Is that okay to ask? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okay, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Uh, so before I joined the Global Chamber, I used to work as a the Global Project Consultant at Kafala, which is the governmental program of the Saudi Arabia Riyadh, Riyadh Saudi Arabia. And um, um, the thing that I did there was like I was evaluating um the end to end the loan guarantee programs procedures, 
to identify the issues and the bottlenecks and the proposed uh, re-engineer program solutions. And I was um, um, benchmarking the AI implementation strategies against the other industry leaders. Um, so when I was doing that project, um, since that was about, that was about, that was related to governmental program and it was under Vision 2030 um, Saudi, Saudi Arabia program. So it was very sensitive about their data security and data issue. And mm -hmm. not just that program specifically, um, I know the value of using AI tools and I believe the, the creativity and uh, productivity and the innovation of AI tools. But at the same time, I realized there are a lot of companies who also acknowledges the challenges and risk that AI tools can pose to data privacy or like information security and intellectual property rights and et cetera. So what do you think about the general, uh, what do you think about this kind of issue? Because um, because a lot of people talking about that and a lot of workplace raises concerns about the um, potential risks of sensitive or confidential information of the company, I would say. So mm -hmm. what do you think about this? I'm just curious about it. Yeah. Marco, could, yeah. could you could you give a response in like a, a minute? Um, I know that's like a deep, <laughs> deep topic and we could probably have a whole whole session on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I, that, that, yeah. I think this is very tricky uh, question. And it was also tricky to me when I was leading that project. Um, at Kafala because it was governmental program and governmental organization. And that's why I wanted to ask you about like how you think about it, just like generally, not like yeah, specific yeah, answer. <laughs> well, I mean, again, uh, um, as uh, Yuka was saying, it depends whether you're using, uh, you know, um, tools that are, you know, SaaS tools, like Cloud, ChatGPT or whatnot, uh, or you are putting them on-premise. Now, on-premise, uh, is the old way of doing things. Uh, it might be useful in certain instances where you want true security. Uh, as far as uh, most people use AI nowadays, which is, uh, you know, jump on ChatGPT and use it uh, or uh, use Cloud uh, or, you know, those tools. Uh, I'm not a security expert. However, what I can tell is that I never use ChatGPT because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's been purported and it's been, you know, shared multiple times that it's not safe. All right, it's not safe. And myself, uh, and I'm actually working on some research projects which are, you know, pretty intense. They are pretty confidential. They are sensitive information. Huh? I cannot allow, you know, like ChatGPT to work on my data. So in, in the, if you want to still use ChatGPT, then, you know, a team plan, uh, in technically speaking, would allow you to avoid this to happen because you're just paying them more. Now, the reason why I use Cloud uh, is exactly because uh, they put uh, data security privacy at the center. The founders of Cloud uh, were actually the vice president of policy at ChatGPT. Uh, like, uh, they are two brothers, they are Italian, uh, they, they are based in San Francisco, and they left because uh, there was a, you know, an increasing concern about data security uh, in the ChatGPT uh, group and ChatGPT uh, team uh, and they went out they you know they ended up beating cloud so um, that's why i'm using cloud to be honest i mean i'm i'm sharing all the sensitive information uh, of course you know the best solution is to create your own ai but you know unless you have like a very big budget or a decent budget that's not feasible so in short uh, my recommendation would be to put aside uh, things like chat gpt um Gemini from Google, uh, honestly, uh, you know, given how much Google uses uh, data, not sure about that either. For now, I'm using Cloud. I mean, again, I'm, I'm just going to give you like a very surfacey recommendation because there's not not enough time to dive deep yeah. into the topic. Uh, and even yeah. because most people use AI at this level anyway. Would that, is that helpful, Yerim? Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. And also, do you think the management team also should educate employees about the AI security. We're, we're going to have to take that offline. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, and you, just to just to sort of close this close this off, I think the key today was context. Context is so important. Context has something that in prompt designing and working with this technology that has given me so much confidence in relationship building, concept design. I feel like I go in 
knowing that, you know, I put the extra time in, which is not that much extra time, but I put the extra time in, it gives me more high quality uh, results that, that I can trust and, and that, you know, are designed in a way that, that other people see themselves in. And so uh, thank you, Marco. Thank you, Colin, um, for, for coming here today, especially Colin for coming here and, and being with us so late. I hope you get a good night's rest tonight. Um, and yes, quick. I wanted to quickly introduce Eric, if we could, the, a new member, Eric Mulvin. Uh, do we have time for that? That would be great. Yeah. And then maybe have Colin give the last word. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Eric, can you give us just a brief hello and, and uh, a 30 second um, pitch on, on what you do and, and welcome to the Global Chamber. Welcome, Eric. Might have. Missed him. Maybe we'll we'll catch him at at the at the next one. But but all right. So Colin, um, please close us out today. Uh, and yes, we'll end with your wise words. <laughs> I don't know if I have any wise uh, words. Uh, I was very impressed with the framework that Marco took us through. I think we can all see the power of that. You know, all of those elements of context and constraints and all that. It's fabulous advice. So thank you very much, Marco. That's incredibly useful. And, you know, um, just to tie it back to the beginning, these are the kinds of, you know, best practices and things that we could figure out how to widely disseminate, right? It's great, the small audience here and the ones who watch the YouTube replay. But so that's kind of the idea, again, of the AIA Council. The one, of, the question about security is a real hot potato, you know, and it changes from month to month. You know, uh, open AI, probably because of pressure and competition from Claude, finally has given data controls in the settings where you can toggle off sharing your data with the model. Just FYI, that's quite new. Um, I'm not saying that to vouch for, for open AI. I don't work for them. <laughs> but <laughs> but that, that, data, that data control is there now. So, yeah, I think it's really exciting. And um, we're going to be plotting and scheming of, you know, what the next steps are. Um uh to really have all of us um across the globe you know benefit in accelerating our business success through ai it's very exciting thank you doug thank you yuka thank you jacob thanks to everyone yeah no thank thank you colin thank you, thank you everyone and everyone have a wonderful rest of your week uh and we will see you here next month Thank bye, everyone. You so much. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.